Now, in the U.S., this week, the country's top court was hearing a unique Trump-related question. Did Donald Trump violate the 14th Amendment's insurrection ban on the 6th of January 2021? And does that in any way mean that states have the right and the ability to remove him from the ballot? In other words, to say Donald Trump is not eligible to contest. He cannot be the president. Now, to really understand the story, you've got to go into the background. What actually happened on January 6th, 2021? Supporters of Donald Trump attacked the U.S. Capitol. This was two months after Trump lost the presidential election to Joe Biden. On the 6th of January 2021, a joint session of Congress was counting the Electoral College votes to formalize Biden's victory. But Trump supporters entered the Capitol building, vandalized and looted it, assaulted police officers and reporters, and tried to find the lawmakers and attack them. Thankfully, that didn't happen. But clearly what happened was a dark day for the world's oldest democracy. What led to the attack on the Capitol? Now, on December the 18th, Trump wrote on X, which was then called Twitter, big protests in D.C. on January 6th, be there, will be wild. By then, Trump was already complaining that the election had been stolen from him, that it was fraudulent, and that America had to be saved. On the 2nd of January, Trump announced he plans to speak at the March to Save America rally on the 6th of January. So the big question is, by all of that, did Trump engage in insurrection? I won't tell you what I think, but I will read out for you what Section 3 of the 14th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution says. Allow me to quote. It says, No person shall be a senator or elector of president or hold any office under the United States who having previously taken an oath as an officer of the United States, shall have engaged in insurrection or rebellion against the same." Unquote. Now, in December 2023, the top court in the state of Colorado cited this clause to disqualify Trump from the state's primaries. In a sense, the Colorado Supreme Court said, Donald Trump has committed insurrection and by virtue of the 14th Amendment, he cannot be president again. The state of Maine also disqualified Trump, once again citing the insurrection clause. But by then, Trump had already moved the United States Supreme Court against the Colorado ruling. Cut to Thursday. The case came up before the U.S. top court. So what happened? Now, two of the arguments that were presented were, number one, Section 3 of the 14th Amendment bars candidates from holding office, not running for it. And number two, the president is not among the officials to whom the provision applies. Now, the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, John G. Roberts Jr., asked, and I quote, the whole point of the 14th Amendment was to restrict state power, right? And Justice Rina Kagan said, and he said something even more important which could have a bearing on that entire ruling. He said, and I'm quoting again, Ari, the question that you have to confront is why a single state should decide who gets to be the president of the United States. So whatever is happening in the Supreme Court, of course, has a major bearing on the legal aspects and the legal questions around who should be the president of the United States. But politically, Joe Biden was once again forced this week to confront perhaps one of the biggest questions that he's going to face all the way through till November. Is he too old for the job? Is his memory okay? Is he forgetting too many things? Does he have the capacity to be the President of the United States? Now, earlier this week, a video of uh, American President Joe Vi uh, Biden went viral. In the video, Biden is heard confusing Macron for a former French president before calling him a leader of Germany. Just watch this. Right, right, right after I was elected, I went to a, what they call a G7 meeting, all the NATO leaders. I was in, I was in the south of England. And I sat down and I said, America's back. And Mitterrand from Germany, I mean from France, looked at me and said, uh, said, you know, why, why, how long are you back for? So, 
legal questions, political questions. I suspect it is going to continue all the way through till November in what is one of the most dramatic, one of the most consequential elections that we're going to see in a long, long time. And joining us now to tell us a lot more about all of that and also to shed some light on those that entire question around Joe Biden's memory. We do have with us Jonah Blank, who's a former foreign policy advisor to President Joe Biden. He advised Biden for nine years on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. He's also a senior journalist and an author. Mr. Blank, thank you so much for joining us. I just wanted to start off by getting your sense of where those debates and discussions in the Supreme Court are at. Yes, uh, it's likely, I think, that from the tone of the questioning, that they'll say, we're not going to kick Donald Trump off the ballot. That is, we are going to grant Trump's request to remain on the ballot in Colorado and by implication in Maine and other states where there is a challenge. And that ruling will probably come pretty quickly. It might be as soon as tomorrow, might be sometime within the next week, but there's no reason to think that this is going to be a, a month-long or multi-month-long endeavor. Right, but I'm, I'm just coming back again, the question around memory, because we can already see how the rest of 2024 is going to go. If it is Trump versus Biden, which seems to be the case, you're going to have a situation where Trump and Trump supporters are repeatedly going to keep on saying, Joe Biden is not fit to be president. He doesn't have a good enough memory. A reverse argument may be to say that Trump is equally bad, is equally old. But the rest of the world is saying that, look, we are talking about the president of the United States, the most powerful man in the world. Is it, is it justified that the rest of the world should have a concern about this, that, uh, you know, you have to have the capability to be able to leading, lead the United States in the free world? Now, you've advised Joe Biden at great length. Is this something that the world should worry about? In, in the case of Joe Biden, where uh, I know him quite well personally, I uh, don't know Donald Trump personally, so I can't really weigh in too much on that beyond what's on the public record. I can say this, Joe Biden throughout his whole political career has uh, had some um, some verbal gaffes. He himself is the first one to say it. He's uh, frequently let his mouth get a little bit uh, further ahead than what his brain may have wanted. And he's been doing this since he was a young man. He certainly was doing this through all the years that I advised him. So this is really not necessarily an age issue. Does age play any part? I don't know. Um, I certainly know that the, the that the the verbal uh, sort of flubs that he has made over the past few days uh, with the uh, the names of foreign leaders and uh, the, the ones that uh, that special counsel her referred to are exactly the sort of things that uh, Joe Biden has been doing as a middle aged man, as a young man. So uh, that really doesn't seem on target to me. Compare that with what is on record for Donald Trump, where. I mean, every time he opens his mouth, things that come out that are just insane. So I really don't see any equivalence here. All right, uh, Jenna Blank, thank you so much for joining us with that perspective. Thanks a lot.